Prefabrication technology allows giant skyscrapers to grow even faster, which makes them even more profitable and desirable. But as skyscrapers soar even higher into the clouds, they become exposed to a new enemy, one that exploits every weakness, the wind. To build the 442-meter Sears Tower in Chicago, the proverbial windy city, engineers must turn the skyscraper inside out. In 1970, the architects building the new headquarters for Sears and Roebuck in Chicago face a problem. Their skyscraper, the Sears Tower, will be over 100 floors tall, a height that exposes it to huge wind forces. Building this skyscraper using a traditional steel skeleton would cause massive problems. The taller a steel skeleton gets, the more susceptible it is to bending in high winds. Gusts off Lake Michigan can buffet a skyscraper at up to 80 kilometers an hour. This causes the upper floors to sway, affecting the workers inside. The motion of a tall building is more like the motion of a ship. It creates a kind of seasickness. There's that same sense in a, in a very tall building. So it's necessary to reduce the swaying component down so that people are not sick. The architects of the Sears Tower invent a technology that can beat the wind. They shift the steel framework from the inside of a building to the outside. This so-called exoskeleton makes it very hard for wind to bend the building. In the Sears Tower, nine such tubes lock together to make the building rock solid. The exoskeleton is the best way of resisting wind ever invented. Even at wind speeds of over 90 kilometers per hour, the top floor of the Sears Tower only moves 15 centimeters. The Burj Dubai is expected to be nearly twice as tall as the Sears Tower. At this extreme height, fighting the wind with a rigid exoskeleton is not good enough. To stop the high-caliber residents from getting seasick, the architects turned to highly advanced aerodynamics. The most important thing in a tall building is the way it interacts with the wind. And so uh, what we did is we essentially, as we designed this building, we kept testing in the wind tunnel. And we, and we used the wind tunnel as part of our design process. At high speeds, wind can be extremely dangerous for a skyscraper. Air rushes around the building and forms mini tornadoes called vortices. These areas of low pressure suck the building sideways, and the taller the building, the more dangerous the vortices become. And these large forces are actually perpendicular to the direction of the wind. If a tall building were ever to, get to fall down the wind, it's most likely it'd fall down sideways to the wind, not in the direction of the wind. So on the Bourge Dubai, rather than fight the wind, Bill and the design team decide to deceive it. They don't make the tower flat and rectangular, but give the Bourge Dubai a more unpredictable shape. Each section of the tower is designed to deflect the wind in a different way. This disrupts the power of the vortices and breaks the hold of the wind on the building. As the wind blows across it, uh, it, it never gets organized because every single portion of the building will shed vortices at a different rate than the rest of the building. And we call this confusing the wind. So we actually, when we design the building, we're actually designing the wind and the way the, the wind behaves uh, around the building. And it, and it makes a tremendous uh, difference. We would never have been able to go this tall if we had not done that. 